Good evening, fiends. Welcome to another episode of Sinister Parlor Podcast. I'm Zombie Barbie, and tonight I have my amazing friend, my twin of evil, my soul sister of darkness, Liz Liddell. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, madam. How are you? So excited that you're on here again. <laughs> Me too. It's like talking to my sis. I know. We are. We are yeah. sisters. <laughs> Truly. I, freaking, I know. I was like, I wonder if I should put on red lipstick. I bet she'll have it on. I should do it. But then I was like, shit, I'm running wow. out of time. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, I'll time do it next time. Is time is precious. It is, especially since I kept like wow. fucking everything up. So I'm like, crap, crap. <laughs> well, same here, girl. You got your shit together, though. It's been one of those damn weekends, though. I'm like, oh my gosh. I know. Like, so behind on everything. But same here. But we're here. We are. And I'm so happy you came on again. I want you on like all the time. <gasps> Thank you. I'm honored. I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So we're going to start planning shit and you're going to come on like quite often. <laughs> yes, I would love to. I'm Yay! honored. Oh, I love it. So tonight what we're going to do, we're actually going to do something kind of different. We're not talking about a specific movie. We are doing a paranormal episode. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of paranormal stuff. Um, as if you guys watched it last time, you know, me and Liz really like ghost adventures and we really, really like uh, Zach Baggins. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about some ghost stuff. <laughs> yes, we are. Spooky. <laughs> Hell yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I was trying to think of like some ghost movies to kind of, th- but the only thing I could really think about was paranormal activity. That's because of the word paranormal, I think. Yeah. No? Because I was Probably. thinking that too, paranormal, yeah. and then I was like, why am I zooming in on this movie in my head? I think mean, it's because of the word, but it's no, it's be. true. Yeah, and then also paranormal activity was shot from like, you know, our point of view, I guess, mm-hmm. or just like real time, and so we're talking about something that's very real and mm-hmm. real happening sort of thing, so it makes sense. Yeah. I hear you. Well, and it's like, you know, what they did with that, as I say, we're not going to talk about a movie. I'm talking about it. But um, what they did with it is, you know, you did, well, the first one, at least, you know, you didn't see anything. It was more, you heard it. So you're Mm -hmm. picturing what's happening. You're picturing, okay, there's a spirit there. There's something there. And that scares you because that's what happens for real. You know, you hear it. I mean, sometimes you see it. Yes. But mostly it's your ears that is picking up on what's going on or like your feelings yes big time and I think that that's why like me and you get along so well is because we pick up those things from we're more sensitive to it I suppose so like once you recognize that you're I feel like you're more susceptible to different things and feelings and being able to pick it up and um, digest it the way you do I suppose so Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. No, it's super cool. It's scary sometimes, but it is super cool. And it's like, and then you get the ones that like, don't believe it. And you're like, you can't say it's not true because I know for a fact this and this and this happened. You know, I have seen things. I have heard things. I mean, I know you have too. And it's like, you can't say that that's not real because it's happened. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I don't know. I just, I, I find that I don't have the mental strength to, to combat it or argue really with somebody who doesn't believe in that per se, because I just think, well, maybe they don't have the, the perception and the sensitivity that like we're lucky to have in a way. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's almost like a lost cause trying to defend it and justify it. Sort of what Zach does every day on his show. Mm hmm. Yep. No. There's been like a few of his episodes where I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like if I was there, I would freak the fuck out. Yeah. You're shook. There, yeah, I'm like, always shook. Yeah. <laughs> or like the, you're watching, you're like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then you're like straining so mm-hmm. hard to see something. And then, yeah. you know, they're like, oh, it didn't pick up on the cameras. And it's like, shit. Like I want to see it, but like, what are they seeing right now? Cause I mean, he'll be like, you know, oh, it didn't pick up on the camera, but you know, there's just a shadow right here. And I want to see it so bad. Yeah. And then you picture like how they're feeling being right there. Some of those times I'd freak. I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Honestly. 
And I mean, one thing I really admire about the whole thing is that he really, um, or all of them who are on the show recording and whatnot, they're putting themselves out there. Mm-hmm. And it is terrifying. It's scary to invite those. So, like it, every time that it's happened in my own life, I didn't do it willingly, I guess. It's not on mm-hmm. purpose, except for the one time that I did play the Ouija board. And I guess I was inviting something in. Mm-hmm. And after that, um, I mean, it's not like I did it on purpose to invite it and yeah. Zach and crew are going out there every time and asking for it and putting themselves out there and that's that's a, that's a scary position that a lot of people I don't think would feel comfortable in doing and I mean we're scared of what we don't know and if we don't have answers for a certain thing like it's it's scary to some people and inconceivable and I think it's easier to say it's not real it's yeah not real definitely yep Um, like I'll always, you know, if I'm trying to explain something or tell somebody like something that happened or whatnot, and I'll be like, you know, I don't know if you believe in this, but this is what happened. And a lot of times they won't argue like, oh, it's not real, but you can kind of tell they're like, oh, okay. Like, I don't care if you believe, I'm just telling you what happened. This is what happened. Exactly. (laughs) I agree. Sis, it's happened so many times. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to get to me anymore. I'm just, you know, I'll share my story, but it's, you're not going to get everybody to, to, to understand or, you know, they've never experienced it. They've never, or it, maybe it's, they won't let themselves experience it because it's just so it's out of the box. It's, it's mm. too much. Yeah. And there's yeah. enough to worry about in real life, like real life. I say that in air quotes because yeah. <laughs> whatever life. you consider real life, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's scary and we don't, as a people, we don't, we t- tend to turn our head from things that aren't, you know, real or see like seeable, tangible, where you can feel it, touch it, see mm-hmm. it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. Well, even like, um, there's things that will happen to people that don't believe in it. And you instantly think, okay, mm-hmm. that was totally a ghost or that was totally, you know, a spirit trying to get through or what, you know, whatever it is but they try to think of it as something else. Like, Oh, it was just like a creak of the house or, Oh, it was just this and that. And it's like, no, you just don't want to accept that. That's what it was. Exactly. The mercury, the, Mm -hmm. the gravity, the specific gravity. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, Oh, well, you know, our house is at a tilt and that's what made that shit fly across the room. It was nothing. I'm like, the fuck it wasn't. (laughs) That was something. (laughs) I mean, if it was a snake, hell, it would bite you. Like, it's it's there. But, yeah. I mean, you can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is this one time. So, I was, um, I used to house sit, dog sit, this huge house. And I don't know if he watches this or not, but I know he doesn't believe in ghosts. I totally do. Yeah. Um, and so, I'm watching it. And, I mean, it's scary because it's a big house regardless. So I was always kind of yeah. scared there because, you know, I'd be alone with my daughter and it's this huge ass house and, you know, double yeah. staircases and all these windows that had no blinds and whatever. So at night, you know, I'd always close myself in the bedroom, lock the door and I would sleep with the TV on so I could kind of hear the TV because I always picture like if I turn the TV up, I'm not going to hear what's going on out there. So if there is something happening out there, I'm not going to really hear it. So I'm not going to freak myself out. But um, yeah. so I'm laying there one night and it was just one night where it was kind of weird and I just felt weird and I didn't know why I kept waking up. I kept kind of getting almost anxiety, but not at its fullest. It was just odd. And so I'm laying there, my daughter's sleeping and he had a, at this point he only had a cat, you know, he used to have dogs, but then he just had a cat. And so I'm fucking laying there and I'm just kind of looking at the ceiling and all of a sudden I hear this like kind of (gasps) like that, but it was, it, it wasn't the cat. And I'm like, what, you know, you kind of hear it. I'm like, okay, what was that? And so I'm kind of listening and it stopped. And so I was like, what the fuck? Do I really hear that? Okay. So I'm laying there and then I'm terrified to go to bed. So I'm just kind of laying there and it does it again, but it's like super fucking loud. And I was like, and I open up at first I'm thinking, okay, maybe it is the cat. So I open up the yeah. door and the cat's sitting in the middle of the living room where there was, cause where the scratch was, it was almost like the door wall type area. And she's mm-hmm. way the hell across the living room, just sitting there, just sitting there, didn't do anything. And I was like, Okay, well that's kind of odd. So I like, <laughs> she's like, wasn't me. And so, you know, yeah. she's in there. I go back in the room, I kind of lay there again, and it fucking does it again, but it's like super fast, like just just weird clawing. So I freak the fuck out. Mm. I call my mom. It's like probably 12, 1230. Call my mom, doesn't answer. Call my brother, doesn't answer. You know, I'm freaking out. So I text my cop friend. I'm like, 
I'm kind of at first thinking like maybe something broke into the house. So I text my coffee, yeah. like, you know, Hey, you know, are you on duty? And he's like, no, why? What's wrong? And I'm like, well, I'm hearing these scratching, you know, these scratching sounds in this house. Um, I don't know what it is, this and that, you know, like, I just wanted you to come check out the house. You know, if you were on duty, he's like, well, I'm not, but you know, if, if you think something's going on, you know, I mean, call, call dispatch, they'll come out, they'll check it out. I'm like, yeah, but if there's nothing here, I feel stupid making them come out. And he's like, yeah. oh, you know, just remember, you know, if there's anybody in the house, you have a right to shoot. And I'm like, okay. So I have my, <laughs> I always have my gun there too. So I have it next to of me, course. but I never have it loaded. I just have the yeah. clip in. So I have it next to me and I'm nice. getting scared. So I end up opening the door at one point and I hear a ball, like, you know, like the cat toys with the balls. Yeah. In them. Upstairs, uh-huh. he has this weird banister that goes upstairs and it just goes across the entire house. Um, no walls, whatever. And I hear the fucking ball roll, roll across the floor. Cat is still downstairs with me. <gasps> I'm like, no. oh my God. You know, so then I'm really freaking out. So I go and I'm trying to wake my daughter up. I'm like, Autumn, you need to wake up. There's something here, something in the house. And she's like, Mom, there's always sounds here. It's fine. I'm like, you don't understand. There is something in the house. And she's like, no, it's fine. So finally my mom calls back and she's like, yeah. Oh, I mean, come home if you want to, it's a cat. She'll be fine. Just leave. If you want to come home. I'm like, all right, I might do that, but hold on. So then I'm on the phone, autumn's half asleep. And all of a sudden you just hear this boom, like upstairs. And my daughter flies oh. out of bed. She's like, let's go, let's go, let's go get your stuff. Let's go. And I'm like, Oh, I thought there was nothing here. And she's like, I don't know what that is. So I go, my hands are getting super sweaty. I'm like, yeah. I go to grab my gun. I'm all, you know, I need to load this now because if somebody is in the house and they actually do come around this corner, my hands are too wet. I'm not going to be able to fucking load it. So I yeah, load the gun. The fucking cat comes in at this point after I load it and I don't see her and she pops up on the end of the bed and I'm like ready to shoot her head off. I was like, holy shit. So then you hear that boom, you hear the scratching, ah. definitely not her. She's in the room with me now. And it's like up above me, like kind of in like the light socket, like there's just, <laughs> and I was yeah. like, fuck this shit. So I grab all my shit. I'm trying to turn all the lights on. And like, he has it where, I mean, if somebody's in the house, they can see me from this staircase. They can see me from this staircase. They can see me over the banister on each side. So I was like, Oh shit. shit. It's like the glass house. It was, it was, I hated oh, that. Creepy. Cause he has all this property too. So it's like, if anybody's outside, they can totally see inside everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I flip all the lights on. I tell autumn, I'm like, all right, when I tell you to go run straight down that hallway, go straight out to my car. She's like, all right. So I flip them on and you know, I'm trying to make it so like, I can't, nobody can like see me. So I flip them on. I'm like, okay, go. So she runs down the hallway, gets, you know, runs out to the car. And then I had, it was when I was making bath bombs. So I had a big old thing of bath bombs. On yes. the and so oh, no. I Did fucking, you grab them? <laughs> this is the funny part. So I run out of the house, you know, I'm in the car. I was like, oh shit, Autumn, I should go grab my bath bomb. She's like, don't scary movies. You never go back in the house. Are you stupid? I'm like, Yep. Yes, girl. Yes. She got it from her mama. She learned. Don't you ever it's watch true. horror movies? I was like, oh, yeah, but with like, the, like, the bath bombs. I was like, oh, <laughs> but that took a lot of time to make those bath bombs. Time is money, Autumn. <laughs> I know. And I was like, what if they steal them or what if they get like ruined by the ghost? So I know. Never oh, found out that night what it was, but my aunt is psychic. I know I had talked to you about that before. Yeah. So my mom is like, you know, I talked to her and she's like, you know, there's something in the house. Rihanna doesn't know what it was. You know, what, what was it? And she's like, did a cat pass away recently? And actually it had oh, my, me and my stop. doctor. Yeah. Me and my doctor actually put the cat down in the house because he was really sick one time when I was cat sitting. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So she's like, there was a cat there that was playing with the other cat. And so, you know, it was playing with toys upstairs and it was there to visit. So that's what it was. Oh, as I, as I say that the fucking lights just flickered. Did you see that? I didn't see it, girl. <laughs> my light just went flick, flick. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, so after uh, that I was like, okay, well, if it was the cat, you know, I liked the cat. It liked me. I took really good care of it, but I'm still pretty yeah. fucking scared. <laughs> yeah. You're shook. How? I'd be. You loaded your piece. You put one in the chamber. Shit, girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> movie. I almost shot the cat's head off. That was the shitty thing. I was like, I can't even imagine how I'd explain that, you know? And there'd be two ghost cats and the second one would be pissed at you. It wouldn't be I a friend know. with ghost cat. He'd be I mad. I was just coming to cuddle. <laughs> exactly. He was like, I love you. <laughs> I know. But when it popped up too, it scared the shit out of my daughter too. Cause it popped up and she jumps and I was like, Oh yeah. It's face. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh, that's horrifying. I got chills. Yeah, I got the it, chills. It was really scary. 
<laughs> and I think the worst part was the ball because I, I'm looking right at the other cat. So I know it's not that cat. And you just hear the yeah. ding, 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 like going across the banister. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to die. I'm probably going to die tonight. <laughs> Oh, girl. So that's what I love about animals, though. It's like, I think that they also kind of have that, that sense we that do. they're super in tune to other things because to them, like, we know a future. Like, if we knew an animal was sick, they don't know that they're sick. Mm-hmm. If we knew, like, one of us, like, had cancer, we know we're sick or, like, experiencing something terminally. But animals just are, like, now, in the now, 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 now. Mm-hmm. So they don't know. Like, plus their heart is innocent. And so... I think that they're just a little bit more perceptive to things in the environment. And so I, I, God, it kills me every time my cat is staring off into the wall. And know, they'll go like this and like watch shit. And you're like, yeah, they clearly and follow it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's terrifying. And it is. I know, <laughs> and I try to ignore it, but it's there. And <laughs> I mean, which makes me think like with, in your case with this cat, do you think that it's always like that something had to have, have passed in the home or in the presence, like wherever you are for it to like make itself known? Or do you think that it can travel like space and time, like to a different location or time? I think I've never thought of it into that depth as far as if they can travel. I think yeah. they probably could. I do think that. But I think the cat was grounded there. And I honestly wonder, did the cat know it passed? I mean, it, apparently, so my aunt was yeah. saying it, it would go there every night to see the other cat. So yeah. I wonder if it knew it passed or if it thought it was still around and that's why it was playing. Like, I don't really know if that's they true. They travel. Because then you think, like, why would they travel? as opposed to, you know, being in the place where they knew that was their home and love and I'm familiar and with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't for think, sure. I mean, I'm sure they probably mm-hmm. could travel, but I don't think that they do, I guess. They might I travel know. with you. Like if you're the owner, like, I mean, they might travel, you know, if they move, they might come with you. See, that's what I'm kind of hoping. Cause I'm kind of hoping it's like a spirit of my past cat or something trying mm-hmm. to play with my cat. <laughs> I don't know. It, it could be. I know. Yeah. Or it could be a demonic possession. It could Something be that too. scary. Yeah. Um, so there was, I was kind of brainstorming before the show. I didn't do as much homework as I should have, but I was like, okay, well, what is like, what is the biggest paranormal um, happening to happen to me sort of thing? And it was back when I was in college, I was living at home in San Antonio and I would hear a child cry oh, at fuck night. That. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's scary. <laughs> and I lived with my mother, and my brother was at home at the time, and they never heard it. And get this, I shit you not, it was between two, three o'clock, and the four o'clock hour, all oh, within that gosh. time frame. And I would stay up really late writing. Um, and I was a night owl. I slept a lot during the day and I had classes later on in the evening and I would drink caffeine late and I just, I didn't go to bed. So I was like, okay, well I could be hearing things, but I mean, it was, it was constant, <laughs> consistent. And the sad thing about it was that it sounded like a kid crying. Mm-hmm. And um, most days it was, it, or nights, it was a child crying. And it sounded like it was in the fence, like right in the back from my bedroom window. And I would look out and I wouldn't see anything. And it got to a point where it was so bad. I did wake up my brother and he was pissed. He was like, don't you ever wake me up from that shit again. But it's because (laughs) he was scared. He was scared shitless. And he was like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't care. I don't care. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. And so, like I said, like that's, I think it's a lot easier for people to, to just say, no, it's not real. Yeah. You know, it's easier. It's easier to say that. And so eventually it turned the last time I heard it, um, long story short, there was no kid. Um, but I I was worried that somebody was being like beat or something bad was happening in the neighborhood. And so I would keep my eye out and there wasn't a kid who lived there at all. And I don't know if there was at one time, it was a fairly new subdivision. So I don't know. Um, but the last time I heard it, it laughed. It was laughing. Ew. Or she was laughing. And that's the last memory that I have of it. And it, it creeps oh, me out to this day. They give me chills. 
Yes, because, and they also say, you know, like a kid, like you hearing a kid and it being some sort of spirit, it's, it's, it may not be a kid. It could be actually mm-hmm. something worse and more sinister. And they take the form of kids because of their innocence and they, mm-hmm. they have energy that they draw off of it. So oh, I think my that's gosh. what scared me the most because I, I don't know that it was a child. <laughs> that is so freaking, especially if you have kids behind you. Like there is I no for a kid ghost to haunt that area unless like for some odd reason, something before the subdivision, but that's weird. Yeah. And that is so fucking scary. <laughs> kid no ghosts are reason. creepy. They are. They really they are. are scary. Yes. Um, that ghost adventures, there was one where there's lots of them where he explains like where he runs into kid entities and he believes that they're actually not children and something darker and whatnot taking the form of a child but the the dolls episode island of the dolls in mexico oh yeah yeah that was a good one that was a good one i think the gentleman originally put out some gentleman actually put out a doll um for a child who had died and it, in sort of like her honor, like he, when he found her, I think she had a baby doll. And so he hung up the doll and then people started like all over the town putting up dolls and stuff. And so it mm-hmm. became the Island of the dolls. And so it started with a child in mind. And mm-hmm. I don't know, that one was pretty bad though. That was scary. That made the top 15, like scariest ghost adventure moments that I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Well, and they were scared too. Remember, they were actually really creeped out. They were scared shitless. And dolls Zach are scary. Not like dolls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're scary. I don't blame him. Yeah. They're fine. He hates dolls. Robert I've seen him run before mm-hmm. Robert. Yep. Robert the doll. <laughs> dolls in general. It's just like that's scary. Puppet master used they to scare are. me because I hated that they were little puppets. I was like, ugh. Yes. Now it's like, uh, it scared me then. Freaking Chucky. I mean, it's mm-hmm. true. I think that's, I was, th- I was listening to our last episode and I was thinking more about it and I should have mentioned like he's little and they get a speed, he can hide. And I think that there's something so creepy about that and mm-hmm. dolls in general, like ventriloquists and they're dummy. Like I just, there's something yes. about that that's terrifying. The old Twilight Zone episode creeps me out too because it's the same concept. It's this like, talking hand and it's actually something yeah it's creepy well even talking tina remember the talking tina one (laughs) i'm talking tina yeah that was scary too yeah dolls are just fucking creepy and then dolls are like kids kids are scary (laughs) thank you yes see it's a a chain Mm -hmm. there's a connection oh hold on did your light go out yeah hold on a second (laughs) I'm not going to hear you for a minute because I got to turn my light on. <laughs> See, that's the shit. Hold on. <laughs> I agree. I'm scared. Oh, shit, y'all. <laughs> the cord was like, fell out. <gasps> that was terrifying. Just go you start. our viewers. <laughs> ah like what the hell <laughs> my cord got loose somehow oh fuck <laughs> was it your cord i don't know it's because we're it? talking about fucking kids it's probably some damn kid spirit that's like i know oh, yeah? you want to be scared here let me turn off your fucking light yeah. <laughs> oh my god or some demonic entity oh god see that's like the worst like i can deal with no. you know like this like normal spirits i guess but when i see Knock on wood, I have not, I haven't really, I, I don't want to like jinx myself, but it's like, I haven't really, I guess, dealt with as dark as what Zach has. You know, I mean, I've had little things yeah. happen to where you know, it was more on, it was my error as far as like bringing shit into the house I shouldn't have brought in that had something attached, you know, stuff like that. But he yeah. goes into these dark ass places with dark entities and spirits. And I mean, you hear about them getting affected like, for months afterwards and it's that I would never intentionally put myself in that position to to even be in the same vicinity as a spirit like that. Um, Did you see the one? I agree. The Zozo demon. Did you see that episode? Yes. That's scary. 
It's terrifying because that's one of the commonly manifested demons, isn't it? That's what they said. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know that until I watched that episode. Yeah, same here. It, it's wild, and that's what makes me think twice about you know putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I mean, I respect what they do because I mean, I don't want to bring it to my loved ones and have that on my hand that something happens and it could be because of something I did or invited in. So, you know, like I said, nothing has happened to me, knock on wood, but the same time, like, I don't want to knock on wood. I don't want to upset them. Like if they yeah. need to communicate with somebody, <laughs> yeah, talk to me, girl. Yeah. If, if you're <laughs> like, good, definitely communicate. But if you're bad. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, did I tell you, I can't remember in the last episode. I don't, did I tell you when my, um, my neighbor was over here, my spirit neighbor? I don't no. think I said that story. Oh. So we had this neighbor and um, he ended up, dying in his house had no idea he died he was dead in there for like three yeah. months, for I think three months or so um he was he was a hermit recluse wasn't didn't really talk to many people but when he he would go down to some area with his family like during um I think it was November like for Thanksgiving or something like that and they hadn't heard from yeah him. and normally he would have booked his tickets and whatever oh, but he shit. didn't so they were like all right so they called the cops yeah. like, okay, something's going on so cops are beating on my door I didn't know that's who it was um, so beating on my door. I don't answer my door. If I don't know you're coming over, you can knock all you want. I won't answer yeah. it. So they're beating on the door. No, yeah. Don't answer. I get in my car to leave a little bit later and there's just fucking cops swarmed around the house. And I was like, holy shit, not my house, but then the neighbor's house. I'm like, holy shit. Like what the hell happened? Um, yeah. so apparently he had died, uh, had been dead for a while. He had a heart attack, um, died in the hallway, you know, whatever. So one Christmas it was I think it was a Christmas after he died. Um, I was dog sitting and I had a really, really bad migraine. Yeah. And so I didn't want to drive my car because I you know, like where you get them where you can't see or hear very well. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And you're going to throw up every time you turn your head. It, yes, it's us. Yes. It was so bad. And so my boy, uh, Owen, that you saw like a few minutes ago, um, he doesn't oh, bark. He is not him, y'all. He's so good. He's <laughs> such a good boy. You heard his name. He's like, what? Um, oh. he would bark at the wall downstairs and he's not a barker. And so he would just bark, 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 bark. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what is wrong with you? Um, so I had my mom come pick me up. It was like Christmas Eve or some shit like that. And I had her come pick me up. Oh, the night before. It, oh, it must've been Christmas yeah. day because the night before we were at, I'm kind of going off topic. Um, the night before we were all taking pictures in front fun. of the Christmas tree. Me, my mom, my sister-in-law are standing there with our camera, taking pictures of the kids in front of the tree all of a sudden you see something black go right by the camera and we all stop like, what the fuck was that? And we didn't see anything. Didn't know what it was. We're just like, fuck. Okay. Something just went by. So my mom picks me up Christmas day with migraine, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Hey, uh, what was our neighbor's name? And I said his name and she's like, read this. So she hands me the phone. I look at it and she'd ask my aunt, the psychic one, you know, um, you know, what was in the house the other night? Something went by this and that. Um, and she said it was a passerby. It was just somebody just going through. It was nothing specific. And then she said, and Owen, the dog, he's barking at the wall. Like, what is he barking at? And she's like, you know, it's a man named my neighbor's name. Um, he's just there visiting. And basically he he thinks the dog knows him because our other dog looked like this dog and he had met that dog, but not this one. And so he's like, you know, he thinks the dog knows him and he's wondering why he's barking at him. So he's kind of getting like frustrated. Like, why is he barking at me? I know this dog. My mom's like, oh, it's a whole different yeah. What's he doing? She's like, well, you know, he just likes to come over and visit. You know, you guys talked to him and had him over for, you know, certain holidays and this and that. And he just comes over to visit, you know? And my mom's, I was like, fuck that. Get him out. No, no, I do not want him here. This and that. All of a sudden our cell phones go dead. Our fucking lights turn off. Like all this shit's going nuts. So we end up, um, everything powers back on. My mom calls her back and she's like, you know, he said, you know, don't worry about it. He's not there to cause any harm. He will keep anything out that's bad. You know, he's just there. He'll protect the house. You know, he's just, he's not going anywhere until he wants to. And I was like, all right, well, if he protects the house then I'm good with that, but, but she was spot on with his he's protecting the house. Yeah. I think he's yeah. gone now. I think he did move on, but he was here for a while. Terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, there was some weird shit. It was like, Oh my God. But, um, and like, why did you get a migraine? 
I don't know. I, sometimes I think that certain things happen and you're like, wait, why? That could be you know? too. Like if yeah. I mean, it, if we are more connected to these things and there's the moon and the stars and we feel more energized, like when they come out, mm-hmm. like, so to speak, I mean, and then also if you take into consideration, the moon controls waves and such and can have an impact on the ocean and all these vibes around the world, like your health and your, the fact that you had a migraine that day, like, Mm -hmm. and it made you, but just the chain of events to me is very strange. And it makes me kind of think like coincidences, is it a coincidence or is it something more natural at play? Something more natural that we would believe in, but other people would be like, no, it was a coincidence. Yeah, I never. But how can you deny like it being the same person and all that? It's just Mm -hmm. it blows my mind. Yeah, well, it's like my mom didn't even know his name. I knew it, and that's why she was like, "Wait, what was his name?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, blah blah blah." And it's like for my aunt all the way in Florida to get him spot on his name and why he's there and when he passed. It's like that's how you know it's true. Yeah, she didn't know about him. She didn't know who he was. My mom just said, "Who's in the house?" And she's like, oh, it's, yeah. you know, and went on. I was like, oh my gosh. But yeah. I didn't even think about the migraine thing. Cause that's when the passerby went through. And I mean, three yeah. of us saw it. It wasn't like, it was just me that saw it or my mom that saw it. I mean, we all three saw black shadow go like walk right by the camera and disappear. But it's almost like you were drained of energy because you know, you were, you're using it for something else or something else is using your energy and Mm-hmm. you know you just so happen to get, I don't know ah. I sound I sound crazy to no who doesn't believe in those things or, but I think it's legit no I never even thought of it that way it, it makes sense now that you kind of say that because it was just like just a massive migraine the next day massive yeah. I mean I couldn't even drive you know how bad it is yeah it's debilitating it's awful mm-hmm. so yeah that's actually makes total sense I never even of it that way see that's why i need you because you like make me think of things in a different way (laughs) ah see you're my sis my sister from another mister definitely (laughs) (laughs) oh man but yeah i don't know but um so you know like on wow i mean we're gonna bring up ghost adventures again but um aaron Goodman. apparently he's really really sensitive with them because and i knew it a couple weeks ago what happened but it was something when he was little um, he would like talk to spirits and see spirits and stuff. And there was, so his mom was saying he's always had that connection with that world. And so a lot of his experiences Mm -hmm. with ghost adventures, I do kind of side with him on stuff a little bit more just because I feel like he has a stronger connection because it's been with him since he was little and he gets fucked with a lot too, you know, so which makes he sense. Does. He does. He really does. Poor Aaron. Mm-hmm. I always think that actually. And at first I used to think it was funny because I'm like, oh, they're putting him at the brunt of all the jokes, you know, like yeah. they make him stay in the little morgue meat locker and the actual like, you know, where they shove the bodies in and they're like, okay, yeah. stay in there, Aaron. It will come get you in 30 minutes, you know, sort of thing. I'm like, oh, well, that's not fair. Like poor guy. Like, of yeah. course he's going to hear something by mm-hmm. himself. But I mean, and then also like, do you remember the first video that they put out that actually put them on the map for Travel Channel um, where the the brick gets thrown across the room? No, I need to look at that. Yeah. So I got it from Walmart in a $5 bin, but it was the Ghost Adventures Travel Channel movie. And it was the movie to start their whole endorsement with Travel Channel for the show. Oh. And um it's it's creepy, girl. You need to see it because there's I mean there's a brick that flies across the the room and it's kind of like how does that happen? Holy but shit. during that episode, poor Aaron he he gets a message I I believe and I could be quoting it wrong. I'm so sorry, Ghost Adventures, but mm-hmm. I think the voice says, "Where is your God now?" And <gasps> only oh, I just got hears- chills. Yes, and Aaron goes running out of the little, wherever they're staying in this little gold mining town. And he's terrified. He's scared. And he's like, you know, I don't know if I can come back. I don't know if I can do this. But I mean, that ever since the first episode, Aaron always gets the shit end of the brick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
No, he totally does. I don't does. know what it is. And he does it too. Yeah. Like shit, after some of those experiences, I'd be like, uh, I don't want to go in there. Oh, yeah. Thank you though. <laughs> I'm going to turn on my light real quick. No, you're fine. It's getting dark here. I'm yeah, freaked no. out. <laughs> I know. See, it's getting dark on both ends. <laughs> Okay. okay I'll right edit, again. I'll edit that part out. I have to stretch. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much better. It just like all of a sudden okay. was light and then went dark. Dark. I know. <laughs> the stars know we're talking about things we shouldn't. Yeah. Yep. Oh that's man. It's okay. But yeah, I feel I feel so bad for him. But he still does it. So I mean, he's got a. I like it to a degree or he wouldn't do it. So did they, so like, how did the, how did they get a movie with travel channel if they weren't really established with travel channel yet? Like what happened? Well, I think that he was filming a documentary and I'm not sure how travel channel picked up on it. If it was his team that like pitched it to them or because it was one of the first of its kind when it came out, ghost Mm -hmm. adventures and then all the other ones kind of followed. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not, I do know that it gained a lot of traction locally, wherever it occurred, maybe Arizona, I want to say. Probably. There's all to, kinds of weird shit have, there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just an old, <laughs> it's old, old state. And if that's where it did take place, um, it just got a lot of local, the local media paid attention to it because it was so, it's like, why did this brick that weighs however many pounds fly across the room like projectile style you know and that would take like human strength to pitch it across the room even then so like they had physicists come on and say yeah that's not that's not possible you know the speed it was traveling at and the way that it was caught on video so they got really lucky with this footage and then it sort of took off for them from there that's cool see we need that we need to get our ghost hunting stuff going I wish you were here because it would be so much I agree. easier. We got to like figure something out because uh, if we can get travel I channel know. or something like that, we could be together like all the time. We would have the money for it. Hey travel channel. I know. Hello. I totally need you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, I can see it now. Yeah. We'll go everywhere, sis. Hell everywhere. Yeah. That would be like a dream. That'd be so awesome. I know. Um, even like that Nick Groff so guy exciting. that's on it. Uh, he has paranormal lockdown. Now he has his own show. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I honestly, I haven't checked it out yet. Do you like it? Yeah. I didn't realize he was part of ghost adventures for a little bit because it wasn't the whole time. It was just like a short couple seasons. Um, but I'm like, God, that guy is so familiar. I can't place him because I just happened to watch paranormal lockdown on, I think it was Hulu or something like that. And then when I saw him Mm -hmm. on, uh, on, uh, ghost adventures, I was like, he's really familiar. Who is that? And I looked it up, you know, cause I Google everything and it's yeah. Guy. And I was like, Oh, okay. I mean, it's good. It's just, oh. I don't think anything at this point tops ghost adventures. No, I agree. I agree. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, you can watch I, them and I like them, but I still think best. that we could do a job, but yeah, ghost adventures. Yes. I think so too. Crazy. <laughs> you. <laughs> And like nobody has a show on girl investigators. No, they don't. We could do that. Mm-hmm. That's where we come in. Hello. Exactly. Yep. So that would be perfect marketing. We look the same. Yes. We are sensitive. Yeah. We are dark. We are mm-hmm. fucking awesome. I think we could do a really good job. But no demons. Yes. We don't really want to deal with demons. <laughs> No, but they're probably going to come into our lives regardless. I know. But I mean, we're tough, girl. We got it. We got our piece. We're packing. Yeah. Put one in the chamber. <laughs> we'll shoot the ghost. I know. It won't work. But <laughs> it won't work. But if anybody tries to mug us, we got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yelled it. It's good. We're yeah. Good. So we got we to figure it out because I, I think that'd be super cool. <laughs> and we could go literally anywhere because if you think about it hotels like every time you've stayed at a seedy motel I mean I've, I'm not above it to stay at a yeah. shit motel I mean you know stuff has happened there stuff against people's will stuff oh, yeah. just motels are just a breeding ground for 
you know, and so you feel it every time you go in. And I don't know if it's just me, but I mean, you see that a cigarette burn in the sheets. And I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. like, God knows what happened here. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Shit. People just randomly die. die. People get murdered. Yeah. There's drug dealers. There's fucking hookers. There's shitty people. There's good people. I mean, there's all that energy stays in areas. Yeah, but, Even yeah. if they're not dead, there's still that energy. Yes, exactly. So I feel like we could go anywhere, travel channel, and give you a show. I agree. We're going to have to contact them. We'll have to tag them in mm -hmm. this video and see if they happen to yes. see it. <laughs> <laughs> they should if they know it's good for them. Hell yeah. In Texas, <laughs> like where you're at, you have so many areas that are known mm -hmm. to be haunted. Yeah, it's just a big state and it was just lawless and it used to belong to Mexico. Like there's just so much history. It's just rich in history. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just, that's also a breeding ground for, you know, happenings, paranormalness. Yep, definitely. And then I'm over here, you know, in Idaho and we have a bunch of shit here too. Um, yeah. We have some areas here in Boise, but then if you go out a little ways, kind of the older towns like um, Lava Hot Springs is one of them. I think Zach actually went there and <gasps> he found all kinds oh. of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it Spooky. used to be, I think, some hospital. I don't know if it was like a like a real hospital or if it was like an insane asylum, but they turned like the uh, operating <sighs> area into like a lounge inside the hotel. And Zach went there and it is known to have paranormal stuff happen, like good stuff and bad stuff, like creepy shit. Well, yeah, if there's this negative energy that once was there and thriving as it was in its original capacity, and then you bring in, you know, the tourist dollars and travel and whatever, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost disrespectful to them in a way. And yeah, I, I believe it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not a good mix, but no. it happens. Yeah, it does. And we need to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is behind you? Is that a mugshot? So yeah, that's a mugshot of Willie Nelson. Okay. I'm like, I swear that's a mugshot. I keep looking at it. I like, know. That's cool. Actually, when my brother saw it for the first time, he thought it was Charles Manson. I, I thought, thought so too. Why would I have a mugshot of Charles Manson in my room? No, it's Willie Nelson. It's He was arrested in Dallas, Texas, probably for weed. But oh, okay. <laughs> I know I keep seeing, yeah. I thought it was Charles Manson too. I'm like, Oh no, not, not Charles Manson. Oh, <laughs> he terrifies me. He's I got bet. some good movies about him though. He really does. He does. Hell yeah. Once upon a time in Hollywood even. That yeah. Good one. <laughs> yeah. That was a good movie. The really good movie. But the know. ending was just odd. You know, it's like, that it was, really and I get it. it fun, I though. know. Yeah, and I think the real ending in real life is so heartbreaking that mm -hmm. I almost kind of enjoyed the ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because it's like, oh, well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if things had really, yeah. if they hadn't turned out as bad as they actually were. Because, yeah, yeah in that case, real life, definitely, it's, it's sad. Yeah, <laughs> that was horrible. Well, and I was wondering too, because I watched yeah. another Charlie Manson thing the other day. I can't remember what it was, if it was a documentary or if it was a movie. I don't know what it was because I've, I watch all that kind of shit, the serial killer stuff. Um, oh yeah. Same here. And I was like, you know, I wonder they're almost glorifying it so much lately with all, you know, the serial killer stuff and doing these documentaries. Yes. How does Roman Polanski feel about it? It's like all this, you know, he probably tried to forget about it and, you know, cause I mean, Sharon oh, I'm his sure. wife and his baby and all that happened at his house. It's like, he's probably trying to forget and they're just bringing all this shit back up. Oh yeah. That like, poor guy. I've thought about that so many times. Um, and I think Jack Nicholson was actually a really good friend of his at the time. Roman. And, yeah. And oh, he actually wow. went to go help clean up the house oh, man. like with the blood and everything before Roman got back home because he was in Europe or wherever he was at the time when the murders happened. Mm -hmm. and, it's just that's dark shit, man. It's it is. Fucked up. Yeah. It's so sad. It but is. It, but it's funny, like how, you know, not funny, but it's like, you know, how sad it is and stuff. We still are so drawn to watch these things. You know, I mean, so like serial killers are horrible, but I'll watch every yeah. single documentary that comes out. 
I mean, yeah, exactly. And as sick as it is, you know, that's the reason his girlfriend, the 20 year old from California or whatnot, Charles Manson's girlfriend, Mm -hmm. while he was in jail, had somehow possessed rights to his body. I think there was a there was a legal dispute, um, for sure. But the fact that she was going to get the body and the remains and start like a sort of a freak show in California, come see his body in the mausoleum sort of thing, last box. I know that. Like as if he was some pope in the Vatican in the glass oh. box being preserved, was going to have tourists come in and, you know, observe the body wow. as a museum sort of, it was just like a sideshow. It's just Way to sort make of, money. Yeah, it's money, and Mm -hmm. I mean, you're promoting something that's fucked up, and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, doesn't sit well with a lot of people, but at the same time, a lot of people are going to pay to go see that, Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I mean, (laughs) yeah. Well, what did Zach Baggins just buy? (laughs) We keep bringing up Zach Baggins. It's like, he's done everything. It's hard not to bring him up. But he, he is, didn't buy yes. something of Charles Manson, like a shirt or a oh, something weird. His toe tag. Oh, I didn't know His that. like toe tag. Oh. Yeah, I think it's his toe tag. I'm pretty sure it's the toe tag that he had on him when he was pronounced dead. Oh, man. He gets everything. Yeah. And like, I'm sure that's going to bring more yeah. shit to that museum because he's got all this bad shit. They just closed down one of the exhibits, that chair. Oh, because, oh no. Yeah, what chair? Um, I'm trying to remember what it was from. I watched the episode and it was like, it fucked oh, with no. up Billy. It fucked with Billy. It fucked with Zach. Oh. It fucked with Aaron. Um, it was a dark, dark, dark <laughs> and it connected to it. And I don't mean damn that. chair. <laughs> He's crazy. He like buys this shit that you don't want to fucking touch. I know. But yeah, I guess like anybody who would either sit in the chair or even people who just walk by it, stuff was happening to him. So he closed that exhibit down. I think it's a lie. <gasps> it comes down to it. You know, there's shit. Oh. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yep. There were I don't even know how insurance it. works in that. Like, <laughs> yeah, because they probably <laughs> don't believe in it. But I think if, you know, people. Well, yeah. Out, yeah. So they probably took it it's as a liability. As, well, if somebody falls and hits their head, then, you know, they probably didn't think of it as ghosts. They're just like, oh, well, you know, shit's happening to these people in your museum. So we need to. I don't Damn. Know. Yeah, he closed the exhibit. I'm trying to think. What oh, else. no, Zach. Yeah. Protect yourself. <laughs> Have you seen a show, he's Artifacts? He's in- I don't think no. he would sage. I don't think he'd sage it. He wants that shit there. He's not going to sage it. That's true. That's the true. Experience. And that's what's kind of like, oh man, I don't know. I mean, he's called a priest many a times to cleanse him and to de exercise him or to exercise him. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. Haven't you I seen the know. exorcism of Emily Rose? She died. Why would you want yeah. to possibly have that happen and possibly die? <laughs> that was exactly. based on true events. <laughs> Mind blowing. I don't know. I don't get it. Me either. Oh, most, most people try to avoid it, that. but yeah, but he's got a show called oh. um, Artifacts, Ghost Adventures Artifacts, and it's the Haunted Museum people bringing in these pieces into the museum, and Zach actually knows oh. a lot about it, and Robert the Doll was there too. Um, oh my gosh. But yeah, some of the I stuff love it. Touch. I love the concept. So it's stuff that's attached to the artifacts, mm-hmm. and then they're bringing it in. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then um, he has this really I'm badass sorry. room. It's like this beautiful room. Um, he's got all that like old looking stuff big old pretty like oriental rug and it's all dark and it's like purples and reds and like super dark and creepy and these people bring in their pieces you know whether it be furniture dolls clothing whatever it is jewelry and they'll tell him the history behind it like what's attached to it what happened where it's from all this stuff and some of the things he knows what's wrong with it and some of the things he's just like mind blown like oh my gosh you know can i touch it and some things he's not allowed to touch Ah. Mm -hmm. so what does he where does he draw the line and know what not to touch they'll tell him Uh usually usually people like a lot of museum people have brought stuff in um one was like this dresser thing from um i believe it was a house and now it's in a museum and i guess open the drawers would die or some weird shit so they brought a (gasps) family member (laughs) in and yeah psychic in and the spirit of whoever was in that box was actually the lady's grandma or some shit like that. 
and she was like, uh -huh. and just weird stuff. Um, some of the things he'll keep it's uh, better to sell it to him. It just, it depends. But there's been a few where people are like, no, you can't touch it. And he's like, oh, okay. And sometimes he's scared too. He's like, oh, that really scares me. And they're like, yeah, that's pretty creepy. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, so or he gets really excited. <laughs> so cute. I'm like a little kid. <laughs> He's kind of like oh, us. That's probably you know? how we would be. Yeah, exactly. We would be See, <laughs> and we're connected yeah, by the mind. Why. We just said the same thing. <laughs> yes, uh, I love it. It's fine. Yes, so we got to do it. Um, when we're when we're talking earlier about trying to figure out like a paranormal movie and just paranormal activity, the first thing that had popped yeah. in my mind after that was Thirteen Ghosts. I'm like, okay, well that's actually bullshit. Like none of that's real. But it's like I was trying to think of like ghost things and. I'm like 13 ghosts. That's pretty fucking scary. <laughs> yeah. No, it really is. That one was scary. I think, uh, I don't know. The nineties really came out with some, some movies that were, I don't know. They hit close to home like that. I don't, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't say that. That's like, we're like bordering on a whole separate podcast, like talking about nineties horror and eighties horror. And There's our next horror, one. But yeah, right. There's our next one. We'll um, do 90s horror. <laughs> yeah. Love it. But yeah, they they sort of like there was a few movies that came out at that time period that were like, ooh, mm -hmm. that's disturbing. Yeah. I'm trying I, to think of them. But me too, because I can't remember. Pressure, so. I always yeah. get like 90s and 2000s mixed up. You know, like it feels like Same it happened here. in the 90s, but it was like in the 2000s. I was like, really? Because I thought it was older than that. Yeah. Because like Devil's Advocate yeah, same here. another one. Yeah, was, and I think Devil's Advocate came out right around Thirteen Ghosts, and then Stigmata. All three of those were like three of my favorites, but I don't know if it was '90s or 2000s. Stigmata, that was good. Yes, I can't remember either, girl. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, those are creepy movies. Like one and the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 90s, it was sort of 2000s. the same theory, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Creepy. <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, no, like, and like we said, Exorcist was the last episode you said it was before it's time mm -hmm. and it really, really, really was. And maybe, yeah. I don't know, I was, if people weren't ready for that one for sure. No. But, and that's based on true events too. The Warrens went exactly. out and investigated that place. It's like, see, and I've been, okay. And so this is off topic yeah. as far as Exorcist, but, um, so Amityville, yeah, I've been, I have always believed that that really happened. Okay. So I know the guy, Robbie or whatever his name was, um, was it Robbie Defoe, whatever his name? Yeah. He killed uh -huh. his whole family. The brother, the son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And killed the whole family. So that's the part that really happened. And then the Luxes yeah. moved in and all that weird shit happened. And they made Amityville the movie. Um, they did the biography, which I read and I yeah. thought it was real. All these nice. people keep telling me they're like, that part didn't really happen that came out in the media later that they made all that up for money. Hmm. But I just, I don't know. Like I have a hard time thinking that nothing happened. Like that's maybe a that huge helps people fabrication. Sleep at night and, yeah. No, I mean, but maybe it also helps people sleep at night knowing that no, it didn't really happen. Yeah. Um, he just really was angry and he killed his family and nothing else after that really happened. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's a really elaborate stunt to pull to move all your shit out as soon as you move in, you know, exactly. move a family. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like yeah. I can't move myself. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> like that's a lot. That's super extra for something like for some stunt. Yeah. And you spent all that money to buy a house on the lake, you know? Um, yeah. And I mean, if the kid, Why would you before, just... hmm? mm -hmm. it's yeah. like, if the kid before killed his entire family, there's no way nothing is still residual in that house. Something had to have happened. Yeah. I mean, it's bad energy. If like, if somebody, if you hear somebody physically fighting or tensions in the next room with certain people, mm -hmm. you know, and you walk into that room, you're going to feel the energy from that. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me if somebody was brutally slaughtered or if something went down in anger that there's not lasting energy like that there. Yeah. Murder. I mean, be it paranormal more. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's just, to me, it's impossible, but who knows? 
I don't know. Yeah. And it's like, so I refuse to believe that it's not real, but everybody's like, you did know that they came out in the media later and said that didn't all happen. I'm like, but they had a biography. Like, and I know you can lie on a biography, but I just really feel like something had to have happened. Why would you just randomly come up with this idea that your house is haunted? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I've heard the same stuff too, like regarding the truth behind it, but Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. Yeah. Don't buy it. All right. So with Amityville, we kind of got off topic a little bit, but that's what we do. We talk about everything. This was, you know, this show was to talk about everything. So with that though, we are going to wrap it up a little bit. Um, We are going to schedule something here soon so that we can talk about, I think we should do 90s horror. I think that would be good. Yes, I agree. There's too many gems in the 90s to not do it. Yeah. So we'll have to do that and we'll like make a list of it and then write down what we want to talk about. And then obviously we'll go off track because we always do. It's, it's fun that way because it's not predictive, yeah. <laughs> but then at least we can be I like, know. okay, so this like movie, that. this movie. So we'll do that for sure. Um, but now is the time for you to let everybody know where to find you. Um, your Instagram. I know you said you don't really use Facebook, um, but you got some stuff going yeah. on. Your Etsy show, you know, do all that. So promote yourself now. <laughs> yes. So I do make horror inspired cat toys with catnip or without if you just want a little plushie for your desk at work or you want something for your cats you can find me at show me your kitties co and that's show me your kitties with a k <laughs> yes co um and that's on etsy and then at shady lady 666 on the gram so you can find me there hell yeah I know I still need to, I did go on to your show me your kitties and it took me a second to find it because I didn't know it had the co at the end of it. So I ended yeah, up just going to your Instagram. Other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just linked, it's linked on my Instagram. So you can just go to my Instagram at shadylady666. Yes. Pretty easy. Yep. Super easy. And then I'll link it too on the, um, the, the video. I did that last time too. So hopefully people will get their little horror inspired kitty toys. I really want to get one. I'm going to get a few because I really, I said this last time, but I do need to get one because I think the little one that's barking will, will eat it, but we'll do no catnip since she's a dog, but I think she does. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, we can even do a squeaker too if they want. Try that out. That's cool. You do squeakers? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. We got the Grady twins from The Shining. We got Hellraiser. We got Chucky. We got some goodies in there, so. Shit, yeah. All right. Take a look. Hell yeah. And so everybody go there. Show me your kitties (laughs) co. But I will link it for everybody to to find it. Um, So I want to thank a few people. I want to thank you, of course, for always coming on. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't wait to do it again. You are my soul sister, and I love you so much. And this is just so much fun. (laughs) 200%. Um, Yes. But um, Crazy Ink Publishing for publishing my books. Broken Halo and Broken Halo blood yeah. curse. I can't see what direction they are, but whatever. This is the first one. <laughs> this is the second one. Yeah. So available on Amazon, um, in Kindle and print. Um, Matthew Price Thompson with MPT Graphics for doing my artwork. Chris Atella for doing my outro music and then my iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts intro and outro. Uh, Johnny Daggers with Dagger Vision Film for doing my logo and my intro music. I'll also be working on a project with him here in the future. Um, no set dates, but definitely we'll keep everybody updated on that. It is a movie and I am super excited. <laughs> I've read like some of the script. I'm like, yeah. oh shit, this is like, this is gonna be so fun. So excited for that. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be, oh man. I'm it's so like, excited. it's not it's nothing I've done before. So it really, really excites me to do something completely different. So it'll be awesome. Yes. <laughs> we need it in our lives, please. Yes. Yes. See, I need to get like famous so that I can pay for us to go do our ghost adventure stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. I'll buy the plane ticket to get the y'all. hotel. <laughs> Um, yes. my, uh, my oh, sugar mama. Oh yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I love you. Um, my indie productions, um, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, also their website, my They're huge supporters of indie film artists, um, 
everything. They're also a production company as well. They promote every single show that I put out, every single project, and they do that for the whole entire indie community. So definitely follow them and get involved in their page. They, we, we need more people like actually getting involved and kind of conversing and get it out there because they're amazing. Um, Sir Sturdy, Core with Sir Sturdy. He's a fellow podcaster. He's been on the show. He's supposed to come on, I think in a week or so. He's how I met you. So yes, super, super thankful for that. Thank you, Sturdy. Um, so check him out. Also, Bud Vino, he's a podcaster. He's done radio. Um, he does a lot of Facebook lives. Huge supporter, one of my very best friends. And he does Custody Matters Live, where he fights for parental rights and just kind of gives you the inside of the shitty, shitty system, you know? So um, check him out. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I think I am done. So thank you again for coming on and I cannot wait for next time. <laughs> oh, me either. I love you so much. I love you too. All right. So bye. <laughs>